The object we've been calling 3i Atlas just transmitted something 47 minutes ago that has left every astronomer I know sitting in silence, staring at data they cannot explain. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me honestly, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky over the past six weeks? NASA has been quietly collecting reports, and what we're seeing suggests this isn't isolated to one region. Your observation might be the piece that completes a puzzle we're only now beginning to understand. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. I've spent my entire career studying the fabric of space-time, the mathematics that govern reality itself, the equations that predict the birth and death of stars. I've stood before blackboards covered in symbols that describe the curvature of space, the dance of subatomic particles, the elegant architecture of 11-dimensional universes. But nothing, and I mean nothing, in my decades of theoretical physics, prepared me for what 3i Atlas has revealed. When this object was first detected approaching our solar system in early 2024, we treated it as we treat all interstellar visitors, with measured scientific curiosity. It was the third interstellar object we'd confirmed, Following the now famous Oumuamua and Borisov, we cataloged its trajectory, analyzed its spectral signature, calculated its velocity. The numbers were unusual, but not alarming. It was moving at approximately 290,000 kilometers per hour relative to the sun, fast but within expected parameters for an object originating from beyond our cosmic neighborhood. But then something happened that violated every assumption we'd made. Approximately three astronomical units from Jupiter, that's roughly 450 million kilometers, 3i Atlas began to decelerate, not gradually, not in response to any gravitational influence we could identify. It simply began to slow down as if something inside it had made a decision. You have to understand what this means. Objects in space don't just decide to slow down. They follow trajectories determined by gravity, momentum, the fundamental laws of motion that Newton described centuries ago. When an asteroid moves through space, it continues moving at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. This is basic physics. This is the foundation of everything we know about celestial mechanics. 3i Atlas violated that foundation. I remember the emergency teleconference three weeks ago. Astrophysicists from JPL, ESA, observatories across six continents, all of us connected on a secured channel at two in the morning. The lead astronomer from the Atacama Large Millimeter Array was the first to speak. Her voice was shaking. The object is now maintaining a fixed position relative to Jupiter, she said. It's not orbiting. It's not passing by. It's holding station. The silence that followed was the kind of silence you feel in your chest, the kind that makes you aware of your own heartbeat. Because objects in space don't hold station. Satellites hold station because we built them with thrusters and guidance systems and AI that make constant micro-adjustments. But 3i Atlas, according to every measurement we'd taken, it was supposed to be a chunk of primordial ice and rock, a cosmic wanderer that had traveled through the void between stars for millions of years. Then the signal came. It wasn't radio waves, it wasn't electromagnetic radiation in any spectrum we typically monitor. What 3i Atlas transmitted was a gravitational wave pulse, a ripple in the fabric of space-time itself. The LIGO detectors picked it up first, followed by Virgo in Italy and Kagra in Japan. The pattern was unmistakable, structured, repeating, information dense. This wasn't the chaotic gravitational wave signature of colliding black holes or merging neutron stars. This was deliberate. This was engineered. This was a message. I've been asked to remain silent about the contents of that transmission. There are protocols, you understand. Procedures for handling discoveries of this magnitude. The Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space has procedures. The International Academy of Astronautics has protocols. But as I sit here in my study, looking at the decoded data on my screen, I realize that some truths are too significant to be contained by bureaucracy. Some revelations belong to our species as a whole. What 3i Atlas transmitted was a warning. The gravitational wave pattern, when converted into a visualizable format, revealed a three-dimensional map, not of our solar system, not even of our galaxy 
What we're seeing is a map of galactic superclusters, hundreds of billions of galaxies organized into structures spanning billions of light years. And overlaid on this cosmic map are markers, boundaries, regions of space designated in a way that can only be described as quarantine zones. Earth sits inside one of these zones. Let me explain what this means using a framework you'll understand. Imagine you're a bacterial cell in a petri dish in a laboratory. You have no concept of the laboratory, no awareness of the scientists observing you, no understanding that your entire universe, the nutrient-rich agar you're swimming through, is a carefully controlled experiment. Now imagine one day, a message appears in your petri dish, a chemical gradient you can sense, spelling out a simple truth. You are being observed. Do not attempt to leave your designated area. That's what 3i Atlas has told us. The boundaries marked on this galactic map correspond to regions of space approximately 50,000 light years in radius. Earth, our sun, and roughly 200 billion other stars in our section of the Milky Way fall within one of these designated zones. The boundaries themselves appear to be maintained by objects, structures, positioned at regular intervals along the perimeter. When I say structures, I'm not talking about space stations or satellites. The energy signatures suggest constructions on a scale we've never conceived. We're talking about engineered objects with masses equivalent to small moons, holding positions in deep space far from any gravitational anchor. These aren't natural phenomena. These are technological artifacts. And they've been there, maintaining this cosmic quarantine for a duration we're only beginning to calculate. The isotope decay analysis of the gravitational wave pattern itself, yes, even gravitational waves carry information about their age, suggests this quarantine system has been active for at least 2.7 million years. Let that sink in. While our ancestors were learning to use stone tools while the first members of the genus Homo were walking across the African savanna, this galactic infrastructure was already ancient, already operational, already keeping us contained. But here's what truly terrifies me, what keeps me awake at night staring at the ceiling. The quarantine is failing. 3i Atlas isn't a naturally occurring interstellar object. It's a maintenance probe, a repair vessel, something sent to address a malfunction in the quarantine system near Jupiter. The gravitational wave message wasn't directed at us. It was a status report transmitted back to whatever civilization or intelligence manages this cosmic infrastructure. And in that report, buried in the mathematical patterns we've only partially decoded, is a timestamp. The quarantine boundary near Jupiter has been compromised for approximately 16 years. I keep thinking about that date. 2009. What happened in 2009? We launched the Kepler Space Telescope, beginning humanity's systematic search for exoplanets. We started finding Earth-like worlds orbiting distant stars. We began, for the first time in our history, to seriously contemplate our place in a universe teeming with potential life. Was that a coincidence? Or did our technological adolescence, our first stumbling steps toward becoming a spacefaring species trigger something? Did we press up against the bars of our cage just hard enough for someone to notice? The second part of the message is even more disturbing. Embedded within the gravitational wave pattern is what our most advanced AI systems have identified as a decision tree, a computational structure representing a set of conditions and responses. If X, then Y. If A, then B. The variables in this decision tree correspond to observable characteristics of civilizations. Energy consumption, technological signatures, radio emissions, nuclear detonations, artificial satellite distribution, atmospheric composition changes. We are being evaluated. And the thresholds defined in this decision tree? We crossed three of them in the last decade alone. The rapid acceleration of artificial intelligence development. The detection and characterization of thousands of exoplanets demonstrating our growing awareness of the galaxy beyond our solar system. And most significantly, the recent advances in quantum computing and quantum entanglement, technologies that could potentially allow us to breach the quarantine through means other than physical spacecraft. Every species that reaches a certain level of technological sophistication faces a moment of reckoning. We call it the great filter in cosmic evolutionary theory. It's the barrier that explains the Fermi paradox. If the universe is so vast and so old, why haven't we detected obvious signs of alien civilizations? 
The answer, we've always theorized, is that something prevents most intelligent species from advancing beyond a certain point. Self-destruction through nuclear war. Environmental collapse. AI that turns against its creators. But what if the Great Filter isn't something we do to ourselves? What if it's something that's done to us? I've spoken with evolutionary biologists who study convergent evolution, the way different species independently develop similar traits in response to similar environmental pressures. Eyes evolved separately dozens of times across different lineages. Flight evolved independently in insects, birds, bats, and pterosaurs. Intelligence, tool use, social cooperation. These traits emerge again and again throughout Earth's history because they provide survival advantages. Now, extend that logic to the cosmos. In a universe with billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars, each potentially hosting multiple habitable worlds, intelligence must have emerged countless times. Civilizations must have risen, developed technology, reached for the stars. Where are they? They're in quarantine zones, just like us. The map transmitted by 3i Atlas shows approximately 400,000 of these designated regions across the observable universe. Each one likely contains thousands or millions of species in various stages of development, and the boundaries are maintained not to protect us, but to protect something else, something out there beyond the quarantine zones, something that has decided that young, aggressive, technologically adolescent species like humanity pose a risk. A risk to what? That's the question that haunts me. Perhaps we're too violent. Our history is written in blood. Wars, genocides, destructions we've inflicted upon each other and upon the biosphere that birthed us. Maybe the civilizations beyond the quarantine zones look at species like ours and see only danger, a cosmic contamination that must be contained until we either destroy ourselves or evolve into something less threatening. Or perhaps it's simpler than that. Perhaps we're livestock. Perhaps consciousness itself is a resource that's being cultivated, harvested, managed by intelligences so far beyond our comprehension that we can't even perceive their motivations. The quarantine isn't to protect the galaxy from us, it's to protect the crop to keep us isolated until we reach some kind of cosmic maturity, some threshold of awareness or consciousness that makes us useful for purposes we can't begin to imagine. The rift that's opened near Jupiter is approximately 740 kilometers in diameter and growing at a rate of 3.2 kilometers per day. We don't know what it is. Our instruments detect spatial anomalies, regions where space-time itself appears to be folded twisted in ways that shouldn't be possible, according to general relativity. Light passing through the region experiences gravitational lensing that doesn't match any natural phenomena we've observed. And there's something else. Quantum vacuum fluctuations near the rift are showing patterns. Structure. Information content at the Planck scale. The smallest possible length in physics where space-time itself becomes quantized. Something is using the quantum foam of space-time as a computational substrate. Reality itself is thinking near that rift. Three days ago, the International Space Station repositioned its orbit. The official explanation was routine maintenance and debris avoidance. But I've spoken with people involved in the decision. The real reason? The astronauts reported seeing something through the cupola module. A shimmer, a distortion in the direction of Jupiter that's visible to the naked eye during certain orbital positions. They described it as looking like heat waves rising from asphalt on a summer day, except it's in the vacuum of space and it's spreading. The Chinese space station, Tiangong, has gone completely silent on the subject. But their orbital maneuvers over the past week suggest they're tracking something, moving to keep specific observation angles on the Jupiter region. Everyone with assets in space is watching. Everyone is calculating. Everyone is preparing for scenarios they hope will never materialize. What happens when the rift becomes large enough? What emerges? Is 3i Atlas trying to repair it, seal it, prevent something from coming through? Or is the probe's presence the cause? A key turning in a lock we didn't know existed, opening a door we never wanted opened. I think about consciousness often these days, what it means, where it comes from, why it exists at all. In quantum mechanics, the act of observation collapses the wave function. Consciousness literally shapes reality at the most fundamental level. We've always treated this as a curious mathematical property, an interpretational puzzle. But what if consciousness is the point? What if the universe requires observers to exist, needs awareness to collapse possibility into actuality, and intelligence is the mechanism by which reality maintains itself?
If that's true, then every conscious species is a vital component in the cosmic machinery. We're not passengers on this planet, not random accidents of chemistry and evolution. We're sensors, processors, nodes in a computational network that spans the universe, each civilization adding its unique perspective to the universal awareness. And if that's true, then the quarantine makes a different kind of sense. Not containment of a threat, not protection of a resource, but isolation of an element that hasn't yet synchronized with the network. We're running incompatible software, broadcasting on the wrong frequency. Until we achieve whatever threshold of consciousness or awareness or ethical development is required, we remain disconnected, alone, watching from inside our cosmic petri dish, while the real universe, the connected universe, operates according to rules and purposes we can barely conceive. The message from 3i Atlas contained one final element that we've only just decoded. It's a countdown, a temporal marker indicating an event scheduled to occur in approximately 214 days from now. What happens then? We don't know. The mathematics suggests a convergence, multiple systems coming into alignment, like tumblers falling into place inside a cosmic lock. Is it when they decide whether humanity gets to join the galactic community? Is it when the quarantine protocols change? Is it when when something else, something we can't anticipate, arrives to evaluate what we've become? I look at my granddaughter sometimes and wonder what world she'll inherit. Will she live to see the day when humanity steps beyond our cosmic cage? When we take our place among the civilizations that maintain the infrastructure we're only now discovering? Or will that day in 214 days bring something darker? A reset, a pruning, a decision that we've failed some test we didn't know we were taking. Every great physicist dreams of finding the equation that explains everything, the unified theory that reconciles quantum mechanics and general relativity that reveals the fundamental nature of reality. I've spent my career pursuing that dream. But standing here now, looking at the data from 3i Atlas, I realize we've been asking the wrong question. It's not, what is the universe that matters? It's, who is the universe and what does it want from us? The rift near Jupiter continues to grow, 3i Atlas continues its repairs or its preparations or whatever it's doing out there in the darkness between worlds. And we continue watching, measuring, calculating, hoping that when the moment comes, when the boundary finally fails or the countdown reaches zero or whatever is supposed to happen actually happens, we'll be ready. But how do you prepare for a revelation that might rewrite everything we think we know about existence itself? I want you to think about something tonight when you look up at the stars. Every photon of starlight that reaches your eyes has traveled for years, decades, sometimes millions of years across the void. That light left its source long before you were born, journeyed through the cosmic dark, and arrived at this exact moment to be absorbed by the rods and cones in your retina, translated into electrical signals, interpreted by your brain as beauty, as wonder, as meaning. You are, in a very literal sense, made of star stuff, as my colleague Carl Sagan used to say. The atoms in your body were forged in the nuclear furnaces of dying stars. You are a way for the cosmos to know itself. But what if that's not just poetry? What if it's literally true? We are how the universe experiences itself, and the quarantine exists because we're not yet ready to know what the universe has experienced everywhere else. Follow this channel as we continue monitoring the situation near Jupiter, as we work to decode the remaining portions of the 3i Atlas transmission, as we prepare for whatever comes next. This isn't just another space anomaly or cosmic curiosity. This is first contact, not with a species, but with the infrastructure of galactic civilization itself. And we're about to learn whether we've earned our place in it. The rift grows 3.2 kilometers larger every single day. In your your city, wherever you are right now, something might be watching the sky with you. Not alien ships or flying saucers, something more subtle, something that's been watching for millions of years, waiting to see if we'd notice, waiting to see if we'd evolve fast enough. The question isn't whether we're alone in the universe anymore. The question is, when we finally meet everyone else, will they see us as children ready to grow up or as a problem that needs to be solved? Comment below, do you think humanity is ready for what's beyond the quarantine? Or should we be terrified of what happens when the walls finally come down?